Welcome to Cure Aquatics and Exotics. Today I want to take you on one of the most amazing store tours I've ever been on. I can't wait to share this with you. And if you wait to the end, I'm going to show you the two fish that I got there. So excited. So come along with me and let's check out this store tour. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey. So I stopped at this store, I stopped at this store on the way home from the Big Fish deal and it's in Maryland. Let's go check out this store tour. You know I think it's an amazing store when I walk in and there is a koi pond. Not only the pond, but it had everything I needed for my pond. It had filters and food and everything I could possibly think of. Awesome start. So let's take a look down this aisle. So as I walk through the store, especially down this end aisle, I can see that there is many rows. I think there was eight or nine rows of fish tanks, to say the least. And they were all beautiful fish that I don't always see in my local fish store. And then there were a couple rolls of just plants alone. And I was so tempted by these lights. They also had quite a lot of saltwater fish too. And then of course, they had a fahaka. But as some of you know, I didn't get one because I already have one. But the Fajaca isn't the only puffer that they had. They had some puffers that were <laughs> surrounded by plastic plants and they look pretty decent. And then there's this cutie pie. Oh, I wish I got the name of this. Oh, very, very tempting, I gotta say. And their African cichlids look great. They had a whole lot of examples of tanks. And if you were a fish keeper, like how you might want to set something up. You know, even if it was plastic plants and bettas or a planted nano tank. They had a couple of different nano tanks that looked really nice. And they, then they had some larger tanks, community tanks. They had beautiful shrimp tank. I really do like that neon tetra tank. And I think this was one of my favorites, this community um, rainbow fish tank. And of course, check this out, mud skipper, do you know what I got? That's right, I got another African mud skipper. So let me tell you a little bit about these African mud skippers. Well, that's a molly. And that's a puffer. And that's a guppy. But that is my new West African mud skipper. And they're in the goby family. So if they're looking like a goby to you, that's probably why. And I think these are amazing creatures. They live in brackish water. This whole tank is brackish water, which is kind of like a mix between fresh water and salt water. I keep these guys somewhere about 1.010. Try to, you know, keep it around that, give or take. Um, and if, you're, if you didn't know, when I need to add water because of evaporation, I can add my fresh water. But if I'm doing water change, I need to add the brackish water because the salt does not evaporate. Look at this cutie pie looking at me. Very intelligent creatures. They can get up to 10 feet long. So this 45 gallon tank was perfect for one African mud skipper. But now that I have two, I'm gonna need a larger tank. The water in here is around 77 degrees. Sometimes it gets about 81, 82. But as you can tell, I have a tight lid because it's critical that I keep the humidity level up outside of the water as well. And let me tell you why. These guys, so these little guys are amphibious fish. So they swim around, they look like gobies when they're swimming, and then they spend a lot of time up on these land. You see I've got rocks and sand here, I've got branches, another huge what I call sandbox here, some floating islands, along with lots of hiding spaces down here as well. Am I really loving my setup? No. My next setup is gonna look a lot more natural. This is my first attempt at building paludarium, building land on top of the water. 
So it worked very well. I just want it a little more aesthetically pleasing for me. But I think Skipper, which is my male, I don't know if you could see him over in that corner. He's been in here for the last, I don't know, six, eight months. I call him Skipper. If you want to see the story behind him, go ahead and click this link. I thought it was a very interesting story how I came to have one African mud skipper when I intended to buy all three. But let's get back to my new guy, which I believe it's a female. I'm hoping it's a female. Other than, otherwise, I'm going to need a much larger tank or two separate tanks. But this is um, Marianne. Get it? The reason why I need a closed tight lid on this and to keep the humidity level is they not only swim, but they spend a lot of time on land. They breathe air through their skin as long as it's still moist. They breathe air through their mouth and their throat, but they need to be wet. If they're dry, they would not be able to breathe. So I got to keep the humidity level up, which is why I have it closed off. I just wiped off, but normally you can't see this part of the tank because of the humidity level. It's just always covered in humidity. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of breathing is kind of common in all oh, look at them looking over the edge of the fish hi baby this kind of breathing is kind of common in amphibians it's called continuous breathing and they are very good and these are very intelligent creatures did i say they can get up to 10 inches long their dorsal fin is almost like a flag it's spectacular see this 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 their dorsal fin that's going to either show territory mating behavior some kind of flag to let the other mudskippers know that they're there and that and they're trying to communicate either get out of my space or come into my space i guess they can read what the flag means and when it means it oh look at this little guy if you could see she's leaning over the the rim of their little land area watching these puffers and i'm wondering if she's thinking she could take on one of those green spotted puffers I don't think so. Could she take on some of the baby guppies? Absolutely. So these guppies, um, I don't buy feeder fish and they're not meant, they're more meant for, um, they're more meant for enrichment. But if they bred these guppies and had babies, well then the fry, there is several spots down here. Can you see this basket, upside down basket? I like this because fry can go in there and they're safe from any of the larger fish. See how adorable their eyes are? They're set up on their heads so they can see 360 all around. Like little parrots. Oh. They like to eat um, blood worms, frozen food, clams on a half shell. Since I put clams on a half shell in here anyway for the puffers, um, frozen shrimp. They're saying crabs, but I, I'm not going to get live crabs so that they can eat them. And you see how low this water is? If you can see him in the back there, See him climbing up the wall? If it wasn't glass, and if it wasn't this high, they'd be able to climb up. Another reason why you want to keep it covered. You want to keep it covered. But I keep it pretty low, and it's so humid in here, they just can't climb up past this. Now, if it wasn't glass, and I had another enclosure in here for the top half, I'm sure they'd be able to climb out. They have a, a lifespan of about six years. I'm not sure how old they are. I want to say more than likely, all mud skippers are wild caught. So the fact that he's much bigger than she is, it could be an age thing, it could be a gender thing, I'm just not sure. So I really like the way Tazawa Tanks set up his aquariums for his mud skippers. And I'm gonna put a link up here if you wanna see how he did it. It's always good to check out and research all different people on how they do it, why they do it that way. And then you can form your own opinion. But if you just watch one or two people on YouTube, you're only going to get... I, I'm only doing this, what works for me, because these are the things that I had lying around the house. I had an old this, I had an old that, I use this. Whereas if you go to an African Mudskipper website or blog, you'll get different info. You might get more information, different information. That's why I want you to check out Tozawa Tanks videos that's very good and when you research some mud skippers you'll see there's so much there's a difference between the african mud skipper and the indian mud skipper i have the west african mud skippers tozawa has both so very good videos too those are my those are the mud skippers do you want to see what the other fish that i got while i was at this amazing store 
Well, you're going to have to stay tuned for my next video when I'm going to go over my Emerald Eye Rasboras. These guys are adorable and I cannot wait to show you. So thank you for coming along and checking out my store tour and my African Mudskipper. But thanks guys and I'll see you next time. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.